Good evening ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt and I'm back with Kerbal Space Program Hard Career Mode. And as I said last episode, today we are going to take our first steps in going interplanetary, which is to say uh, explore Duna and explore Ike. And for that, we are going to use the battery one. Now I changed a couple of things with it, not too much, but some things. And it should be it. The most important of which would be that I replaced the engine main engine. I unlocked the mainsail liquid fuel engine because we had quite a lot of uh, science to take care of or to, to spend. So I thought why not unlock the mainsail which is should help with getting this thing to orbit. Of course uh, the whole carrier is a bit heavy so I don't think our orbital stage will get us to orbit actually but we'll have to see how this ends hopefully it won't end in tears okay I'm launching at less thrust the reason being that the main sail is just quite a bit Stronger than the uh, than the skipper. I don't want to go supersonic while we are still in the thickest part of the atmosphere, but I think we should be... we should just about avoid it, which is good. I'm going to get the rocket pointed probe rate. Yeah, very good. The problem was that I wasn't sure uh, that the skipper would be able to, to lift the whole assembly. Okay, I don't know what that was. It wasn't anything important. Okay, Those were our boosters. Okay. Uh, I... I done goofed. I wanted to send this uh, vessel to Brennan Depot. And Brennan Depot is currently on the opposite side of Kerbin. <laughs> That's something I didn't check. Okay, there goes our boosters. And I'll just tip the rocket over quite a bit. Because we are pointed too far up or too straight up which would uh, give us a bit of a problem when it comes to getting an orbit or to circularizing I want to go to let's say 80 yeah 80 ish kilometers like this And you might notice 
that I turned off the or I don't have any uh, what are they called radiators because I don't think this vessel will need them the reason why I want uh, this craft to go to Brennan Depot is that we are going to need the the satellite carrier for our circularizing I think and we will have to refuel it otherwise we won't get to Duna at least I don't think we will <laughs> okay too much like this Oops. Ooh, uh. Okay, that works. At least it seems to. Yep, there goes our orbital stage. Another thing I added was the Zephyrtron. Because otherwise we would have ended up uh, damaging that orbital stage when activating our current engine. Now I only want to get an orbit without ending up re-entering the atmosphere if I can. Problem is that the poodle is not very good in atmosphere. Has a very low thrust. It's 250 uh, in space or in a vacuum and I think it's somewhere around 50 or so uh, in atmosphere. Of course, the 50 is probably in the densest atmosphere, but at sea level. But it's probably a lot less effective too at in thinner atmosphere. So yeah. Let's hope we get a periapsis of not much below 70 kilometers. Okay, we are currently rising, or at least our apoapsis is. <laughs> Which is a good indicator that we are approaching an orbit. Okay, like this. Are we already in... Okay, we are already in atmosphere. I was wondering about that. <laughs> okay, so we will have to... Oh, our epoapsis is not that great. We might have to bring it down a bit once we got our periapsis back up. And yeah, we have used quite a bit of fuel of the stage that 
should be used to get to Duna. Okay, there we are. So let's just add a bit of. Uh, oh, we can we can go to 75 kilometers, I think. Epilepsis wise, yeah, like that. Okay, that's not a lot of fuel we we'll, we are going to need for that. But we will need. Oops. Our solar panels. And since we won't get back into atmosphere, we can just. extend them. That's the way this thing is supposed to go. Although I have to admit, because I haven't activated the probes. Oh, okay. I didn't see where we were going or where, where we were, but apparently... Oh, right. <laughs> Still called that Ray 1. Um, let's call it the Duna Explorer 1. Actually, I could make this a ship. That means that I don't need the probes active. Okay. Of course I could also open the cargo base. And apparently I have turned this thing around the wrong way. Huh. Weird. Ah, yes, right. Well, Technically there isn't any up or down in space, but I like the cargo bay to open towards the north pole of a planet. And that's where our probes are resting. So let's see, where is our periapsis? There it is. Okay, do it like this and then don't need this, but we can bring down our apoapsis once we are back on the other side of Kerbin. Where is it? 14? Uh, eh. So 
72 is a bit too low, I think. Something like this, yeah. Okay, so let's add this alarm. What's this? Okay, apparently there's a new version. Uh, I think I'll do that after recording. For now, uh, did I add the alarm? Yes, I did. Good. For now, we're going back to the space center, recovering all the debris. And unfortunately, we don't have a have a note for Eve yet or a contract, but we are going to send uh, another battery one. Again a two-thirds thrust and <laughs> off we go. This was also a bit late actually, but... Not quite as late as... The one going to Duna! Well, we're at it. Rename battle. And again, I'm aiming for about 80 kilometers. Actually, I could probably make this the Duna Explorer and the other one the Eve Explorer. The thing is that the Eve Explorer will have to be launched quite a bit after the Duna Explorer because it's uh, the 
flight to Eve is about half a year shorter than the one to Duna, or maybe even a full year. Oh, hey. Okay. So we we might only uh, be sending one of them off to their target planet today. The other one will stay at Brennan Depot for a while. At least that's the plan. Okay, no, that wasn't it. This wasn't. Another thing is I'm considering doing a, a gravity assist with the moon to get to or to get uh, on the way to Duna or Eve or actually both but I'm not sure for one if it's necessary and for a second part how to how to actually do it Because this is actually will actually be my first flight to another, uh, yeah, to a different planet. Question is whether I should actually adjust my inclination or whether I'll just do it uh, when we are approaching the station. Okay, like this. Now, of course, we need to bring down our apoapsis quite a bit. That's okay. Ah, that's what I wanted. Seventy-five by yeah. Seventy-eight, yeah, that should do it. Once again, we're just going to extend on our zone. Oh, all our solar panels. All right, <laughs> those two parts also contain liquid fuel and they are empty and both of our uh, 
explorers, I think. Okay, question is what would happen if I... There's the moon, it's there. And where is... Hey. Okay, we would have to wait several days for the moon to come around to this side, I think. Yeah, until it's here or about here to get probably around uh, around here so until we get to the moon it moves here and then we have to do it like this so no gravity assist for Duna I think <laughs> So bit there's a bit of a lack of planning on my side, but oh well. I've actually pl uh, planned this whole thing out without taking the moon into account or any sort of gravity assist. Yeah, it works. Set this target. Hey. Okay, <laughs> not much, but it is quite a bit. Hmm. Whoops, no, ah, that's that's a bit of a problem. When you click like this, you can only set the craft there as a target which is kind of annoying because sometimes you want to do a maneuver instead of switching your target okay like this Okay, time to add another maneuver, uh, another alarm. Right, something I did, something I can explain while I <laughs> move fast, is uh, I turned off the what was that? Okay, turned off the fuel cross feed in this docking port on the satellite, and that means that the, those fuel tanks are not used for uh, the main engines of the carrier. Because when I did my first uh, trial runs, test runs uh, in sandbox mode, I ended up with two empty satellites and 
it wasn't exactly what I had planned. And as you could see just now, we still got some fuel, or we still got fuel in the satellites. I was thinking about uh, disabling the fuel cross feed in the in the docking ports that are attached to the carrier. But then I thought maybe at some point I want to put some reserve fuel tanks in there. Or I'm not exactly reserve, but uh, normal fuel tanks. Additional fuel tanks. Which would mean... I think I'll just do that at some, point, some other point. Which would mean I... For, for which I would have needed the fuel, uh, the fuel cross feed. So, or would need it. So I left it the way it is now. Quite honest, I have no idea if I'll be able to reuse the carriers because they are a bit. They will get to to Duna and Eve, but I don't think they'll get back. They just don't have enough fuel. Okay, this is too late. Too bad. I think I'll go with this point eight. No, oh, that's too much. Point three. Yeah, okay, that's that's good. Actually, hmm. Actually, I will rename this to the Duna Explorer because <laughs> it's going to be the one that's ready a lot earlier than the other one. Okay, like this. And yeah, again, I'm doing my maneuvering with the nav ball. And not so much with what you can see of the craft, because that's not much. <laughs> okay. Okay, that works. No. Didn't I? Didn't I just rename this thing? Yeah, I did. That's weird. Or did it pick the name from one of the... Uh... No. I thought maybe it picked the names from one of the probes, but it didn't. Okay, now it works. Whatever that was. Okay, now we are... Oh, this is the other one. Which is going to be named the... Uh, rename... Eve Explorer 1. Actually, 0.2, I think we can live with that. Now, the question is, how many orbits will we need? Seven orbits, or 
is less than 7. I think that's pretty much the, the, fur the furthest we can be. So I will try to bring this down. Okay, now that's it's brought down a bit too far. Okay, let's do it like this. And add an alarm. Which is in yeah, three hours. So yeah. We are going to go with this one. <laughs> I was wondering what that no uh, what that object was in space, but it's Brennan Depot. What a surprise! That means we are going to do our docking maneuver in the dark, probably. Sorry about that. But that's the way these things go sometimes. Probably... Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Getting a bit of a rotation. A bit of a roll. Maneuver got us closer. 
will get us closer. Uh, I might have made a bit of a mistake with that though. Because we are approaching quite fast. Let's plant it retrograde. Okay. Actually not too bad. Except for the point where we don't or can't seem to get a docking port yet. <laughs> and yeah, it measures the distance between the the controlling uh, object, which in this case is a uh, what's it called probe core, and the controlling probe core of the target object. Which is why distance decreases quite as uh, or so much while we are turning. Okay, let's move in. Although I suppose we have to go quite a bit toward the South Pole. There we are. Okay, which is the better one to dock at? Huh. Doesn't matter. Ah! I almost got it! But because I accidentally double, double right clicked, there we are. Yeah, thought so. And we actually need to move quite a bit in this direction. Good thing we got a lot of uh, RCS fuel. Yeah, we got 120, that's two full uh, RCS tanks. I don't think we will need to refuel. At least not the RCS fuel. The other fuel, of course, but not this. I'll just bring us in for docking now, and then I'll be back. Okay. Okay, we've got a dock. So now it's time to refuel this craft, which is going to be kind of interesting. Because I'm not sure that one ARV will be enough. <laughs> or maybe it will. Yeah, okay, it will. All we got left is this.
Okay. Can open the cargo base just to be sure, but... Oops. No, that's... It. There we are. Those car bees are still full, okay. So... Let's close those things. And actually we can undock already. And we got plenty of RCS. Just going to move away from the station. And then we go... <laughs> on a journey to Duna! Actually, we... Yeah, we can set it as a target already, but... Okay, we already got our ascending and descending node, but it's not going to do as much good. Aside from the fact that we can add our maneuvers in that area, actually, no, this. Okay. Now the question is, would that get us to Duna already? No. Going to have to do it later. Do it like this, I think. Oh, ascending node. 0.1%. Uh, degrees. It's nearly perfect. So we're not gonna do anything with that. But we can, as an example, plan this. And it's still not close enough, which means that we can actually... Uh, put in even less. I'll actually put it, do it like this and then do another maneuver around here, I think. Or maybe we'll move this around a bit. Yeah, that's <laughs> that would be too late. There we are. That would work. And I think we'll take this planning and just as a as an idea focus our view on Duna and we are going to end up here which means we will yeah that's wait one year 259 days then we can do this maneuver pretty much so we get a uh, a flyby of Ike. Yeah, a gravity assist from Ike to get to get our our orbit around Duna. That works. I'm gonna take that. I will take that. And of course hoping that this will actually get us what we want. But I think it will. With that we can actually drop our uh, 
probe at Ike and then uh, bring down our periapsis while we are at the apoapsis to get a atmospheric braking maneuver in or at Duna. That's the plan anyways. So we only got two solar panels active, I think. Yeah. Okay, no. This is indirect sunlight. Weird. This isn't. This is blocked by the other solar panels. Yeah, that's, that's okay. We're still generating enough electric charge, so I'll take it. And as you can see in the next to our engine, we are at full uh, at full fuel. <laughs> Okay, now I'm not sure how much, how long we need to burn for 900 meters per second. But I think I'll wait until we are at two minutes and then as in two minutes to to the burn and then just check what what it's going to do of course I hope we don't hit the depot I was thinking about pointing us prograde, but that might point us directly at the depot, and I don't want that to happen. Mm. Actually, no, we're going to miss. Very good! <laughs> Two minutes it means that half thrust we are going to take, or it's going to be quite nice. Of course, I'm not pointing directly at the at the maneuver node or maneuver marker, which means we might end up with a slightly different. Uh, orbital path. It's not exactly what I wanted. Focus our view on Kerbin. That's the problem with, uh, with interplanetary Travels. They are, for one thing, you are burning quite a long time to get the the necessary speed, and for another, you're going to fly quite long. Oh, and the AMU 27 is already on a Kerbin trajectory. AMU isn't. I could uh, could have waited until the the Duna transfer window, but I didn't want to. <laughs> That's still I don't know how long how far away that is actually. Yeah. 
Kerbin. Novo origin is Kerbin Duna. 117 days. That's yeah. Quite some ways out. Because then when we burn here we would end up with our uh, epilepsis encountering Duna. But we're not doing that today. Ascending node and descending node are getting a bit crazy right now. <laughs> it's even gonna be six days until we escape Kerbin. Which is still uh, less time than the AMU takes to get back to Kerbin, so. There's that. Of course we are ending up or we Yeah, we will end up at a somewhat higher uh, velocity relative to Kerbin. until the uh, until leaving the Kerbin's SOI with uh, the EVE Explorer that will have to wait or will have to stay docked at Ren and Depot until the Duna Explorer is out of Kerbin's SOI plan. Okay, let's see. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Let's see where we can end up. Heh. <laughs> and we are in a very weird uh view of the craft. But we are ending up uh, pretty much where we planned. Although I have to recalculate the, those things. Because apparently I've burned a bit too much. Oops. Two years. But we'll... No matter what we do, we'll end up... on that side of Duna. No, actually, we can... That's an idea. We can just point ourselves retrograde and maybe bring down our epilepsis. I think that's that's the big problem. That's the big problem. Our epilepsis is way too far up. And of course, SAS isn't the smartest thing. 
it turns at full power until we until it hits the point where it should stop and then it's a full turn backwards okay that's bring down our epilepsis just a bit like this Now that probably ruined our fuel situation quite a bit, but these things happen. Aha! And that means we can do our burn quite a bit earlier. No, wait, wait, that was... that was stupid. Just <laughs> mixed up the two... Uh, the two markers. But we're approaching the point where we were before. Yep, on the other side of Duna. In a year and 170 days. Yeah, I can. I can live with that. Of course, the burn is in 200 days. But these things happen. So yeah, we are going to escape Kerbin in about six, six days. That's a wide change. And again, still before the AMU comes back from Minmus. Okay. going on? Are we in the shadow of Kerbin? Yeah. Of course we are in the shadow of Kerbin. So this should be our maneuver. And we should be pretty much pointed the the correct way for a for the sun to hit our solar panels as soon as we leave the shadow of Kerbin. Right. Eve Explorer is two hours out for its maneuver node. And the Rukea Kerbin is one hour out for uh, getting into this orbit, but what is it? Oh, that's the Spadlo Kerbin one. Where is it? There it is. Rokea Kerbin one. But I'm not going to do this this episode. Same with the Vecom in this one. And the AMU 27. Oh, okay, the VECO is still four days out. It's almost at its apoapsis, but it's, yeah, 100 meters per second. Minmus is coming in at 200. <laughs> okay, no, no adding. Okay, so. We've sent our first. Uh, craft on its way to a solar orbit. And hopefully I'll uh, we'll at least get to get this one to Minmus before 1.1 uh, 1 .1 hits. 1.1 1 .1 of the game that is. Uh, I I might not finish the mission before 1.1. I'll try to, but I don't know if I if I can do it. Uh, what I will do before 1.1, however, is uh, bring all the Kerbals back that are off-planet. And then uh, Season 2 of the, <laughs> of the Let's Play will start, probably 
a bit boring with uh, the start of the of the space program again. Fly by the sun. Anywhere near by the sun to achieve this goal. Which is in the sun's SOI, which is going to happen in six days in game. Then we get Duna. Okay, that's just orbit around Duna and transmit or recover scientific data. So it might even work if we send uh, a probe to Eve, or if we send the carrier to Eve right now, as long as we don't get an orbit before the contract arrives. But I think it's going to. Either it's going to arrive when we get to the sun, or when we get into Duna's SOI. Which would mean... Uh, which would be a bit bad, because, uh, yeah, as I said, Duna's SOI is going to be in just under two years, or a year and a half, pretty much and the flight to EVE would only be one year and I don't think we can spend half a year in, Duna, uh, in, in EVE's SOI without uh, getting an orbit. So we're going to see if it works through flying by the sun. If that gets, gets us the EVE contract and then we'll see where things go. I might even uh, unlock a couple of uh, new uh, docking ports and actually do one of those uh, station creation contracts or maybe a, a what's it called a base uh, building contract. The other question would be uh, recovering more Kerbals, but we would need more or a bigger astronaut complex and that is not yet in the cards. So yeah, we'll skip that part <laughs> for now. Actually, didn't I... Ah right, I lost... <laughs> I lost uh, Guthrie and then I rescued Burkus because of him, I think. Oh well. Anyway, until next episode, I have don't yet know what I'm going to do then, or when it will be actually, but yeah. Until then, thank you, and good night.